simply titled I only want to preach to you the truth is that all right I only want to preach to you the truth father in Jesus name I ask that you help me help us because I really want to preach to those within the sound of my voice your truth and I'm going to need you I know that there are going to be distractions I rebuke that and bind that right now and I pray that you give me your divine help because I know it's something in here for every one of us including preacher Winston it's something in there for us Lord God and there's something in this word for those who are watching by telecast I just know it thank you sir. Lord Jesus thank you. therefore I'm depending on you, you. Heavenly Father thank you. to help me thank you. and I'm believing that through the preach word the illustrations and all that thank you allow we're going to make it to another level. We're going to come a little closer to, you, to your throne, God. To your presence. You. In Jesus' name. You. And everybody said amen. amen. Y'all give a Lord a hand clap. Amen. Amen. One of the first things I picked up in church was the scripture that said, And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. What stood out in the scripture for me was the part that said, make you. And some of us, you know, we grown folks. We don't want to be made to do anything. Somebody say, man, we, we get upset when folks try to make us or it, appear, it appears that they're trying to make us or put us in a position where we're going to have to do something. You know what I'm saying? My mom used to say like this, you got to go and use it or get off the pot. You know what I'm saying? Either you're for him or you are against him. Oh God, it's quiet already. Can I get an amen or something? You know, God said in his word that make you, it will, it will make you. You can't help but become free if you receive truth and start living by truth. Lord have mercy, believe in truth, just operating in truth. You can't help but become free. You no longer have to wear shackles anymore. Now my message is how I only want to preach to you the truth. And I'm going to begin in Proverbs chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. I always come prepared with scripture. If you write this down, I'll ask JJ for a copy. He can email it to you, the scripture references, so you can go back over it later. It's still going to bless you then. What I like about God is whatever he said once, he'll repeat it. Somebody say amen. God will confirm his word to you. God will allow you to, 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 to be able to, to grasp where he's coming from, to understand what he means. It says in verse 1, my son, forget not my laws, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Now, when you see the word commandment or commandments, you might be thinking about them 10 you heard about coming up in church, but there's a whole bunch of commandments. You understand what I'm saying? We really need the Holy Spirit in order to get into God's good and perfect will and flow there like we're supposed to. Because it's already designed into us not to want to do right in the first place. We was born into sin and the only way we're going to separate ourselves to some level from sin is by accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen. And, and, And allowing him to take that sin off of us and Throw it as far as the east is from the west. Lord have mercy. That's okay. I'm preaching. He will take sin from you. Even though you still use the statement that you are a sinner saved by grace. For length of days and long life. Somebody say length of days and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. How many of y'all want that? 
I just want to preach to you the truth. When you get up into the Lord like you're supposed to, when you get in his word, God will turn back the hands of time. God will turn the clock back on you. Somebody say, man. my wife looked at my face this morning and told me I got a baby face. And that's just God right there preserving me. I done been in like seven accidents. I done had like seven or eight surgeries. I done got the hell beat out of me. God have mercy. Before. I done been to prison and back. I've abused myself with drugs. Somebody say me. And she gonna tell me I still got a baby face? Y'all give a lot of hand clap, y'all. God is good. I, I think my child, Charles, you got a baby face. My cousin Charles looked just like he looked when I was like five. And look how God has preserved my wife. Y'all give her a hand. Ain't she beautiful? I like the way he said in the Baptist, ain't she? It says this length of days and long, somebody say long life and peace shall they add to thee. It says, let, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind. Somebody say mercy and truth. You're going to have to be merciful. You've got to flow in the truth. you got to receive the truth. Make sure it's the truth. Start flowing in that truth. That truth that you know to be stamped of, approved of by God. Flow in that truth. Let not mercy nor truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shall thou find. Somebody say favor and good understanding. Favor. And how many of y'all want favor? How many of y'all flowing in favor right now? See, you got, to, you got to do certain things to experience what I'm talking about right now. Step one, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So shall so I find favor and good understanding. I don't know about you, but I got, I got, a, I got a good understanding. Somebody, I used to have a bad understanding. I got a good understanding. How many of y'all got a good understanding? Don't lie up in here. Because you go to church. You come to church now. And you're going to be taught how to have a good understanding. If you're still hanging on to your bad understanding, that could possibly be what's standing in the way of your blessings. So I say a good understanding. Have a good understanding. It says, it says in the sight of God, in man, in God's eyes, in man. Oh Lord, I understand. I don't argue with God no more. I understand. God did what he want to do. Somebody say understand. I don't understand why, why, why my wife was attacked. Oh Lord, I don't understand. I could have went on for a month until I came to preach to myself something I've been preaching to everybody else. God allowed it. Praise God. Good gonna come from this. Y'all give a lot of hands. Some good, gonna, some blessings gonna come from this. And I think about how strong that some believers have become. You know, they got believers who don't believe in the death penalty. I don't believe in the death penalty. Somebody say amen. And sometimes they're allowed to be tested, you know, because somebody close to them, you know, might get killed or something like that, you know. And the enemy try to, you know, test them out a little bit, try to see where they really stand. And when people forgive, they quick to forgive, and, you know, and say, I forgive them. And I don't think they deserve to die. I don't think he or her de deserve to die. I'm against the death. I don't want to see them die. Somebody say amen. But those folks who ain't solid will change everything up when somebody close to them. You see what I'm saying? It goes on to say, so shall I find favor. Somebody say favor. And good understanding. Somebody say grace. And a good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, with all that you have, with all your with all your being, with all your spirit, with all your soul, and lean not into thine own understanding. You gotta get away from that, thine own understanding, your own way. Like I said earlier, there's only one way. Jesus said, I, I'm the way. There's no other way. How many of y'all still with me? It says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Whatever I'm involved in, I'm going to acknowledge him. Somebody say amen. In all my ways, whether I'm praising him or working for somebody on the earth, I'm going to acknowledge him. 
whether it's the blessings flowing in or the blessings coming in slow I'm going to acknowledge him in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path even when I'm going through like a morning hallelujah Jesus a uh, time of mourning I, I got to acknowledge uh, him when it's getting rough for me I, I still got to acknowledge him how many of y'all feel what I'm saying I, I got to I got to put him in my business and I got to keep him in my business I got, I got to keep my mind on him I got to do this thing in order to stay in God's good and perfect will I got to acknowledge him in, in all things even when I shoot pool or, or play basketball I, I got to acknowledge him it says in all that somebody say all my ways it says be not wise in thine own eyes be not wise I don't think I know how many of you, anybody think they know it all raise your hand did you used to think you knew it all <laughs> yeah I know I've been be not wise in your own eyes it says it says it shall be it says fear the Lord and depart from evil some of the problems with our brothers and our sisters is they got their own plan but it's not the plan that God has for them and they're considering themselves wise even though there's a spirit on them that's causing them to make bad choices and do that which is foolish and, and they haven't decided to to part from evil it goes on to say it shall be health if you do this it shall be health to thy navel thy stomach and marrow to thy bones it'll cause you to be stronger it says honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all that increase so shall thy bonds be fit. well I want to stop right there because sometimes we be tempted to skip over this because people think you're talking about money all the time but money is a big deal I meet so many people that got so many problems they can't work can I get an amen most of them can't work because their urine is dirty can't work because they got the laws looking for them, they want it. Can't work because they're messed up everywhere. Can't work some because they ain't got no skills. Somebody say, man. Can't work because of a label they got on their shoulders. But we serve a big God. Somebody say, man, in God's house. I remember back in the day when men couldn't work because they had been to prison, you know, because they, you know, had went down for murdering somebody. And it was kind of difficult for somebody who had killed somebody before to get a job. Can I get an amen? But all that changed. You don't hear about nothing like that no more. And we got folks now with, you know, I can't get no job because, you know, because of my, my case, man, my case. I can't get, when you get right down to it, when you start examining it closely, you start finding out that a lot of people ain't working because they just won't go look for a job. Can I get an amen? And according to the scripture, if you don't work, you, 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 it's going to be hard to eat. Can I get an amen? Well, the Bible says you ain't going to eat. The Bible says you ain't going to get enough. If you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't go out there and get it, you probably going to have it unless somebody give it to you. If somebody don't give it to you, you might turn to stealing for it. Can I just tell you the truth? There's only one way, and that's the God. Somebody say the God way. And until I got to doing it the God way, I was always trying to hustle. Can I get an amen? I don't go out there trying to hustle God. I don't try to hustle God's people. Somebody say amen. There's a plan for your finances. There's a plan. It's up to you if you want to do it or if you don't want to do it. It's up to you. If you are right with the way things are going, then keep on doing what you're doing. Can I get amen? Some of y'all get four checks and still don't get enough. Somebody say amen. Get your little windfall. That ain't enough. Somebody say amen. Work double shifts, past time. Work for other people. Still ain't got enough. Because at the end of the day, you ain't going to have enough unless you do it the right way wealth God's way salvation God's way healing God's way deliverance God's way ain't but one way so it says honor the Lord with thy substance how many y'all see that how many y'all believe it can I preach this truth this is part of it it says honor God with your substance 
Say it with me. I must honor God with my substance because I want God to honor me with his substance. I want God to bless me inside and out. Bless me with good health, with my sanity, good blood. Lord have mercy. Long life. Got to be here for my children. And plus, I want to be able to pay my bills and bless God. And I want to leave something for my children's children. The way some of us are going right now, we ain't going to have nothing left for our children's children. So, so we got battle enough for ourselves. And we get on up there in age, too. But it's not too late. Because it don't take God long to do nothing. It says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruits. So I say first fruits. And with all that increase, God is saying with, with, your, with your first fruits and with all you increase. With your first fruits, when God bless you, you, you think about God first. You're not thinking about Ray Ray Neem and what Ray 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 need and what you need and your light bills and your rent and your cell phone and your weave and your cigarettes and, and you're going out. Soon as you get that check, God. And when you bless God, if you get something else, God. That's what we call them when we want something, right? We get real serious. And then the enemy comes through trying to lie to you. People just trying to get your money. People making it for you gave or die. Ain't nobody have your money. I used to say that and I asked the Lord, forgive me. I think they want my money. Yeah, I ain't have really nothing they want. I just want my mind. Yeah, I ain't really. <laughs> they just want my. That was the devil. Somebody said the devil. They just want my mind. And no, 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 no. I was after they money. Somebody say, man, honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruit and all thine increase. God is saying, with your substance, with your first fruits and all your increase. That's what you do. He says, now you're showing me that you honor me. You're not just telling me I honor you, Lord. You are showing me that you honor me. Y'all hear that? Anybody hear anything? Anybody hear something besides me? I don't hear nothing. Oh, you're not a sound. You see how important this is? It says, honor the Lord with thy substance. God wants to be first. And as a child of God that really believe in God, that's really going to trust God, we can't have a one-sided relationship. That's why we got divorces right now between man and woman or between the, the husband and wife. It's because of one-sidedness. You got one want to give and bless and the other one ain't want to do their part. I, I'm glad that we serve a loving God and His grace is sufficient because sometimes our relationship is all one way. God doing all the loving, we doing all the thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. And we ain't doing nothing for God. Somebody say amen. And with thy first fruits and all thine increase, so shall, so shall thy barns be filled. I don't know about you, but I want my barns filled. Somebody said, I want my barns filled. It says, filled with plenty, filled with plenty. And it says, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. God is saying, I will bless you. You have overflow, and I'm going to bless you with new stuff. You ain't got to just get used stuff all the time and old stuff, some hammer down with somebody. I bless you. Somebody say, Amen. But God is talking about honor now. We're talking about honor. If you honor, you will be honored. If you give, folks will give unto you. It ain't all about receiving, y'all. It's more blessed to give. And until I started this, I had a difficult time paying bills and trying to do ministry stuff. I'm just being, I'm telling you the truth. I had to find out the hard way. One night I accidentally gave everything. And that's how I started. That church took about four offerings. And my wife gave away everything. I told her, just give it all. I was just joking because I had a little bitterness. And she frowned, gave it all. And before we left that place, the blessings start to track us down. Y'all give the Lord a hand clap. 
I was watching Christian television and I believe it was real. They was doing a telethon and they was taking up offerings and stuff. And this one woman in the group, she had but like 16 cents, you know. And everybody was bringing their gifts to the altar. And she brought her gifts to the altar. And it wasn't but 16 cents. One of the head people saw that 16 cents. And they asked him for $100 pledges and $1,000 pledges. And she come rolling up that with 16 cents. <laughs> you know, and I, the Lord really touched that night because the, one of the heads said, look, this woman gave her last 16 cents and she's over there crying but you know, we're going to bless her tonight. Everybody in that room blessed that sister. People from all over the world blessed that sister because she gave 16 cents. See, back here where I'm at right now, this is where my portion supposed to come. Back here where my feet are. That's where my portion supposed to come from those that honor me and love me and, and are concerned about my well-being back here this is where my money comes in cash our checks back here where I dwell up here you put the Lord's money where it go the first fruits of all thine increase and when you go to the Lord you have to go to him with shame faced in this you go to him with boldness because you're expecting a blessing you know when you give, you expecting. You ain't expecting man to do much of anything. You're expecting God to work through man. God will work through somebody to get to you. There's over six billion ways he could bless you. Some of y'all need to change what kind of people you hang around because you hang around folks that God can't work through. So you got to start going places, doing things. You know what? God will give you witty ideas because you're going to have to own something, buy something, start something, have a business or something. You got to have something for God to work through. God wants you to use some of them ideas. Get, put them in action or something. Believe God for some, some, some down payments or, or, or whatever you need to get your idea off the ground. But God wants to work through something. If you fix how hey, real good, fix how. Do something. Maybe that's a word for somebody. <laughs> Maybe somebody need to fix some hair. <laughs> okay, it says, so, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. In Matthew 6, 1, it says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men. And it says, to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your father. God will bless you for all the adjustments that you made. You ain't got to broadcast your adjustments. Somebody say amen. You ain't got to talk about all your business, what you do and what you don't do. Somebody say, man. And it's all, you know, God wants to talk about the blessings, but there's a limit to how much you need to talk about because the wrong ear might be listening. You see what I'm saying? You're going to have to bless the Lord, and sometimes it's going to have to be you and Him knowing about that blessing. Because another person can see you bless another person and try to get in on it when it's not their time. How I many of y'all still with me? You ever gave one something somebody and you had to get everybody something? So, don't let your arms be done like that. Take heed that you do not your arms before men, but you do it before God and you do it for Him. And you do it also where God sees it. Somebody say amen. To be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine arms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say to you, they have their reward. You don't need man to pat you on your back. You really don't need man telling you 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 did good. You really don't need nobody going around talking about you know they do a lot of giving over there. You know, man, them people that they give, ooh, they give, ooh, man. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Ooh, just the word just spreads. Next thing you know, you got a lot of folks coming and they're not coming for the gospel, they're coming for the giving. Can I get an amen in God's house? It says, it says, but when thou doest songs, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand is doing. They got women who give to the ministry, but they can't tell their husband. That's a terrible way to live. Somebody say men in God's house. And they got men that give, but they can't tell their wives because it'd be an argument. You went gay to that church, and you know I wanted those shoes. You ought to be shaming yourself. 
so we got to pray for people that stand in the way of your giving. 